How's it going? Jasper from Nomo Coast here. I recently have built a location-based photography app called Lysource, and here is everything I've learned about maps on Flutterflow. I will be sharing my learnings by using my app Lysource as a demo. This will be a multi-part video, and in part one today, let's cover the basics. We have two types of map that are natively offered by Flutterflow. One is the Google map, which is interactive, and one is a static map offered by Mapbox. For static map, it essentially is an image generated based on your location and also your map configuration. To get it working, you need to insert the Mapbox API. I will not cover this here because it is straightforward. Simply go on their website, create an account and get your API key here. You should follow the Flutterflow docs and tutorial if you're confused. Once you have inputted your API key here, you can then give it a latitude and longitude information here. I will cover how to get this info from your database later. After lat and long info, you can customize the zoom, tilt, rotation. This will determine the look of your map image. You can test it out from Mapbox Studio and once you find a configuration, a design that you really like, you can put them here on Flutterflow. You can then give a marker color. By default, there is no marker color here. So initially it wouldn't have any marker showing on the map. You can also use a Mapbox custom marker link to customize your marker. Or you can choose to stack an icon in the middle of the map like I did here. So to sort of customize your marker without using the custom link. For an interactive map, we need to use the Google map widget which allows users to freely zoom and move around. To get it working, get your API key from Google and put them in project settings here. Depending on which platform you are publishing your app to, you will need to get the right keys respectively. Flutterflow has tutorials and docs on these, so I will not cover them in detail here. Once it is working, you first need to decide how many markers you want to visualize. If you've used Google Map before, markers are essentially a specific location visualized on the map. In my case, the Lysource app, markers represent locations where users have done a photo walk and also uploaded some photos taken from that particular location. So in my case, I would like to visualize more than one markers. So I will go with multiple here. You can also simply choose not to use any markers. For this video, I will cover where there's no marker because visualizing markers is a standalone video on its own. You can find the link to that video in the description below. If there's no marker, you need to provide initial location with lat and long information to let Google Map know where you want the map to be initially. A common use case here is that you can actually click on this orange icon here to choose a variable called current device location so that your map will locate to where the user is using the device by default, if they give permission. Talking about permission, if you can't seem to be able to get the device location working here, if it doesn't show up or if it's showing in a dis disabled state, it's because you first need to come to the permission settings on the project setup and toggle the location permission on. This can also be applied to the static map as well. To decide which one to pick, static versus interactive off about Google, it's fairly straightforward. I think it all comes down to two questions. First, how many markers or AKA uh, locations do you want to visualize on your map? Second, do you want your users to be able to zoom in, interact with the map in real time? Go with static if you only need a single marker or location visualized on the map and you don't need users to be zooming in and moving around on the map. Go with Google if you want to display multiple markers because the static map doesn't support displaying multiple markers. And also go with Google if you want your users to freely move around on the map uh, with interactivity built in. However, you can totally mix and match the two types of the map. For example, on Lysource, Google is used when I would like to have the users explore the map and be able to tap on a marker and see the photos uploaded at that particular marker. I will cover how to achieve these in a separate video, which I will link down below. And I will use static map when I simply just want to show a rough idea where the location is and I don't want the users to interact with the map. For example, I will use static map as a thumbnail for each photo walk. 
and as a cover image when users are viewing the details page. And because both static and Google Map take lat and long as input, you can actually seamlessly switch between them. For example, here I can click on the static map and be directed to a Google Map widget where we will send to the Google Map automatically to the static map location where we just came from. So you can actually pass parameters from and to maps and switch between static and interactive maps seamlessly. I'll also make a separate video about passing parameters from maps and to map widgets. So stay tuned for that. And there you have it. This is part one of everything I've learned about maps on Flutterflow. If you want to see more Flutterflow video or if you want to follow my journey building my app with Flutterflow on this channel, consider subscribing. Along with this kind of video where I share my learnings, I am also doing some vlogs about me building with Flutterflow and also me trying to launch products with Flutterflow. So if those videos are of your interest, you can also consider subscribing to my channel. Until next time, ciao.